Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the big boy. So let's take off his bubble wrap. Shake, shake. And you can tell how much it's sunk over here. I did this over here off camera. I had some dry castings that I was sifting and I put the leftovers at that end. So that's what that extra bedding is doing down there. So for right now, let's just take a look and see what is going on here. It's been about a week since we've taken a look at him. Everything on top, except for the dang springtails, looking pretty good. Um, kind of just peel back the layers here and see what we find. Looks like they're doing a really good job of processing all of the bedding. Of course, there's a, a mango pit they're still in progress with. I said I was going to put that over there, didn't I? Right, kind of put that focus back down here. Moisture staying really good. Uh, it's been a little rainy here where I live. So that's, that's definitely helping with the moisture. Still kind of eating away here, trying to see what we can see. Now this does look darker uh, because it was mostly leaf bedding as opposed to many of my bins that I use primarily paper bedding with that tend to be a much lighter color. This one, uh, even though it looks a little bit more advanced, it's really not because this started out as leaf litter. You can kind of see the size of the worms. Oops, that already has the clitellum, so we know that's a mature worm and yet look how small he is. Pretty much thought things would start getting bigger once I put them in the, the 55 gallon bin here because there's so much room in here I thought maybe uh, successive generations would start getting larger and you know maybe they will. I just have not have not seen it yet. Uh, avocado See, got to be getting close to the food. Here's oh yeah, the T-shirt. Okay, so let's see what the T-shirt's gonna do for us today. Oh, Must have repositioned it lower. So, you know, hey, look, they're making progress. No, oh wait, I was just about ready to say no super cool worm ball, but then I don't really have the right part of it flipped up. And I think we fed some stinky onions, so I was kind of expecting, um, so not a really big worm ball, but the onions, this is a potato. You can kind of still smell the, the onions a little bit, but there's not anything along you know, anything really left. I'll keep digging around though. That'll break our heart, won't it? <laughs> oh geez, have to dig around in the bin a little bit more. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised I'm not finding any of the... Oh good. One little piece or one onion left so far. We'll just keep digging away here. It's a little compacted. So that's, you know, that is one of the things that the springtails and the mites do. They do break down the harder stuff, I think. I, I'm pretty sure the worms aren't the ones eating this originally. Um, it's got to be the bacteria or the mites or the other fauna in the bin that are doing that. So 
so I'm still digging through. And well, there's probably five or six onions in there, wasn't there? I'll have to go back up and look. Oh, there's one. I must have spread it out more. Aha! There we go. So they're still not done with those onions. And although it doesn't smell horrible, it's very oniony. Oops, sticker. Moisture still more than good. Probably would prefer it to not be as wet as this. I'm gonna I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put the, the old food and the t shirt back here in the middle. So we are making some progress. So that's good. In the war between t shirt and worm, t shirt loses. So I'll put that stuff right there. We'll feed someplace else. We'll feed on one of the ends. Just pushing this stuff over just to make sure that we keep everything aerated. Considering the level of moisture in here, I do not want to have this get or go anaerobic on me. It is a little deeper than many of the other bins that I run, so I do err on the side of caution when it comes to fluffing. More fluffing is better. So yeah, that end is a little drier. We've already been through the middle here. Now let's let's look at the other side. So look at these sticks and move them over. Mango pits. Tuck them in with the onion. And then we'll take a look and see at this end where I had the castings that were unfinished, or not castings, the, the food leftovers. You can kind of see they're kind of pebbly looking. So when I do the, the sifting, whatever goes on top of the sifter generally goes back in the bin. And since it had been dried out quite a bit um, in the process of me making it ready, uh, I put some nice wet bedding on top of it in hopes of, you know, having it, if there was any cocoons in there or, or whatever, that they would have enough moisture to hatch and go on their merry way. So I'm going to incorporate the paper bedding and the, the leftovers still harvesting from when I tore everything apart during the worm apocalypse. Um, had a rat in the basement. Had to use a uh, trail cam to catch it um, visually. And then once I knew what it was to get the appropriate size trap. So that that rat is no more. Which is good because I think it really did eat quite a bit of the worms. Um, I don't really want to hurt any living creature. I hate to, you know, I'm not, I don't know, against hunting or anything like that, but, you know, it's just trying to make a living, but I can't have it eating all my worms. So, alright, we've got the whole thing fluffed up now. Really wish I would remember to take off these tags, but uh, it's neither here nor there. So we're going to feed down here a little bit today, and 
I'm going to give them some frozen food. There's a big enough area in this bin they can get away from it if they, they don't want to be a part of the frozenness. But this is uh, radish leaves, more onions, potatoes, looks maybe a hot dog bun. Oop, looks like a little bit of banana peel. I'm going to put that in there. They don't need any more bedding or anything, but I'm going to put, actually I'm going to put that underneath. Put the sticks under there, put that on there, and then cover co cover that whole thing up again. It shouldn't be as stinky as the onions were, but any sort of cabbage family sort of thing usually does tend to get a bit stinky unless you leave it alone until it's all the way gone, which is not a bad idea unless you're running a, a worm channel and then people want to see what you're doing. So uh, since there are some springtails in here, I am going to give them some neem meal. Just going to kind of put that in on the top a little, work it in a little bit, see if it can't do a little bit for me. So not a whole lot of uh, worm balls or anything like that today, but I uh, did get to see how long it takes to get some onions processed. So that is it for today. If you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.